Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. For today's video, we're making some DIYs that are inspired by Urban Outfitters. If you guys can't already tell, I love Urban Outfitters when it comes to their home stuff. I love their aesthetic so much that my whole bedroom is basically meant to look like an Urban Outfitters catalog. That was basically the inspo behind my decor in my bedroom and if you guys like their style, you'll definitely like this video as well as the other projects that I share on my channel. And whenever I do these DIY dupe videos, I try to use things that I already have in my DIY stash. So hopefully this will inspire you guys to look at the materials you already have to create something beautiful for your home. I'm also super excited to partner up with Squarespace on this video and I'll talk a little bit more about them later. And before we jump in, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe below if you guys haven't already. Let's go ahead and jump into the first project. Hello from voiceover Tina. So jumping into this first project, I'm using a five inch round mirror because that's what I have on hand, but you could definitely make this project with any size you'd like. Then I'm gonna create a template for the frame that we're gonna make. So I first traced out the circle and then I marked off the bottom where I thought I could get away with covering enough of the mirror so that it looked like an arch mirror. If you have a mirror or glass cutter, you may be able to cut it down more, but I'm just working with the materials I already have. So if you have maybe a rectangular mirror, this technique can also work to cover it to make it look like an arch, as long as you make the frame large enough to cover that outside edge. I noticed from the inspiration piece that the arch actually goes outwards instead of straight up and down, but I'm just gonna go along with the curves and make it straight. But I will say that this DIY is just inspired by the original and not an exact replica. You could also create this digitally, which honestly might give you more accurate measurements, but I'm such a hands-on type of person that I like working with my pencil and ruler to figure it all out. So I'm making sure that the frame is just under an inch all the way around. And as I trace the outer portion, I just made sure that the edges match as closely as possible. And this definitely does not have to be perfect. It took me some trial and error, a bit of math, and some help from other round objects that I had around the house. But I think in the end, the guide looks pretty good. I went ahead and scanned my template and I printed it out a couple of times so that I would have extras to use. To make sure that it would work, I actually cut out the middle of the frame just to put it on top and I'm happy to report that this template totally works. I will have it linked down below if you guys would like to use it for your projects as well. All right, so it's time to make the frame and I'm using polymer clay here. So first I'm just gonna roll out a large slab and I put three popsicle sticks on both sides just to make sure that it was even. Then I'm popping that right into the freezer for about 10 minutes to harden and this is gonna make it easier to work with. Now I'm taking the template and I'm gonna trace that onto the clay so I'm just gonna flip it over and then color along the lines with a pencil. Then I'm gonna flip it over again and place it right on top and then we're just gonna trace along the lines of the template to transfer it onto the clay. And once we lift that up, we'll be left behind with a carbon copy of it. So now comes the fun part. I'm gonna go ahead and take some colored polymer clay and we're gonna create some custom colors here. I wanted to create a very earthy color palette so I'm taking some inspo from the original but I'm definitely gonna make this my own. And the best way to custom mix colors is just to roll it around and pull it apart and just continue rolling it together until it creates one cohesive color throughout. And whenever I'm making colors, sometimes you just need to mix in a little bit of white or a little bit of black to create a lighter or darker color. Or you can mix up two colors to create a brand new custom color. There are definitely tons of colors that you can make with just a few basic colors. And I know the original is actually made with ceramic or glass pieces to create a mosaic look, but I definitely was feeling the terrazzo look more, so that's what I'm going with. Also, I don't know if I'm exactly saying that word right. I hear it being pronounced so many different ways, like terrazzo or terrazzo, so I don't know which one is correct, so please excuse me on that. As I'm creating these colors, I'm basically rolling them into little logs, and then I'm just gonna cut each one of them into slices. And from there, I cut them even more to make these imperfect, organic-looking shapes. Then I'm just placing it one color at a time randomly onto the frame part of that clay. And by placing it color by color, this is going to help you balance out how the color is dispersed on the frame. And I absolutely love how all of these colors are looking together. Thank you. 
So I just went ahead and removed some of that excess clay so I could reuse it again later. To mesh in the colors with the base layer of the clay, I'm gonna go ahead and roll it over a couple of times. And I think that this step is really what makes the terrazzo come all together. So now we can finally go ahead and cut this all out and I'm just gonna use my handy dandy X-Acto knife. And whenever I'm cutting out clay, I always like to remind myself to make slicing motions rather than chopping motions. And this is just gonna give us a much cleaner line. I also find that using a ruler helps out a lot. And when it comes to the curves, I do it in small sections at a time to make sure that I'm getting it as close as possible to the template. To smooth things out a little bit more, I'm using some rubbing alcohol on some of those rougher edges. I like to use my fingers for this part and doing this extra step is gonna help you save from doing a lot of sanding later. And I also think it gives it such a nice finish. Now our frame is ready for the oven and I'm baking it for about 20 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And once that's cooled down, I'm just gonna sand off any of the edges that need to be a little bit smoother. And for polymer clay, you always wanna use 400 grit or higher. I just find that using a finer sandpaper is just gonna be a lot better for it. And now to seal in our beautiful design, I'm using a water-based polyurethane in a glossy finish. This is gonna help protect our frame and I like to use a foam brush to seal it and give it two even coats. And now we're at the finish line. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this onto our frame. I'm using E6000 glue for a very strong hold and you wanna let this sit overnight to cure completely. And you guys, how freaking cute is this piece? I absolutely love the colors that we chose for the terrazzo or terrazzo. <laughs> and I'm really glad that I got to take inspo from the original piece to really make it my own. And even if you don't end up recreating this exact project, I hope that you found the tips for this DIY super helpful for future projects because you can truly make anything with this technique. Before moving on to the next project, I wanted to talk about today's video sponsor, Squarespace. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you're probably already familiar with Squarespace, but if you're not, they have everything you need to build a website as well as grow online. And one of the best things about Squarespace is that they are super user-friendly. I remember back in college, I actually made a website for my parents' business and it was very easy to navigate. They really just have all the tools that you need to get your small business off of the ground. And I also really love that all their websites are mobile optimized. I actually used to work at a marketing agency, so working with clients one of the biggest frustrations was just not having a mobile-friendly site. And personally for me, building my website, that was also something that was very important to me because everyone is always on their phones. You guys are probably watching this on your phone, so when I direct you guys to my website, I definitely want it to be mobile-friendly. And really, anyone can use Squarespace, so you can have a personal portfolio on there. Or if you're a small business owner, you can create a beautiful website with their e-commerce templates, marketing analytics, and email campaigns to reach your customers and supporters all around the world. Squarespace also has so many free resources that you guys can use to succeed online. And I always like to plug their blogs and free guides because there's so much great info on there. So if you guys have been thinking about making a website, now is definitely the time to do it. I will have my link down below so that you guys can get a free trial as well as 10% off of your first domain or website. So be sure to check them out and let's go ahead and jump into the next project. For our next DIY, I'm using an Ikea cushion cover and this one is only $3.99 and it comes in a 20 by 20 inch size. But before we start, I'm gonna go ahead and iron it since there are so many creases in it, lines drive me crazy, so I did as best as I could to get it out of the fabric. Now I'm placing a piece of cardboard inside the pillow and this is just gonna create a barrier between the front and the back side. For this Urban Outfitters inspired design, we're gonna go ahead and create a face. So I wanted to try my best to keep it symmetrical with the eyes. So I just marked the center with a piece of tape. Then I'm using a pencil to sketch it all out and I'm just gonna freehand this design since it does not have to be super perfect. Alternatively, you can totally print out the design and put that underneath and use that as a guide to trace. Since there are a lot of curves in this design, I'm gonna go ahead and just place my hand where the center of the curve is, and then I'm moving just my wrist while holding my hand down onto the table. No matter what you're drawing for a project, this is definitely one of the best ways to keep your hand steady. I'm following the design as closely as possible, and I think I did a pretty good job at it. So next, I'm just gonna go ahead and trace the sketch with a black permanent marker. This is totally optional because you can work off of the pencil sketch, but I just wanted to make sure that I was getting the placement right for everything. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use a giant embroidery hoop and this luckily fits the whole design onto it. But if you don't have a large one, you can also use a smaller one and just move it around as you work on it. All right guys, so now it is time to make our design come to life with some embroidery. I'm using a black yarn with a yarn needle and I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it to about a foot and a half just to minimize the back and forth pulling that we're gonna have to do with each stitch. For this entire design, I'm basically doing a back stitch 
So I'm just starting from underneath and moving one stitch over and each one of these stitches can be a bit on the larger side. So after our initial stitch, I'm coming in from underneath again and just moving one stitch over and then I'm going to pull that back into that first stitch that we created and this is going to be our back stitch. And that's all there is to this stitch and I'm just going to repeat this across the whole entire design. For my first row, I'm just following along the line that we created and then I'm going to make my next row right beside it. And from here, we're just going to repeat our back stitch and I'm just going to knot and snip it off wherever the yarn ends. And from the original design, it looks like there are about three to four rows for each one of the lines. So that's what I'm going to do here as well. I also found that it was easiest just to keep one hand inside the pillow and then one outside. And that way you can just minimize moving your hands back and forth too much. This process is definitely repetitive, so of course I would recommend putting on a show or just watching some YouTube in the background. And I would love to hear some of your suggestions for TV shows. Brian and I want to start a new show, but we're not sure of what yet. I know that everyone was obsessed with Bridgerton recently, so if you guys like that, definitely let me know and maybe I'll watch that next. And this is one of those projects where you just get more and more excited as you get towards the end. I definitely was excited working on this because I've actually been eyeing this pillow at Urban for a while. I think it's been around for a couple of years at this point and I still love it. So I know that I'm going to love it on my couch. And I'm super happy that I did a DIY version of this because cushion covers are such a fun and easy way to change up your decor. And this one only costs us a few dollars to do. Okay guys, so we're now coming down to the finish line and I'm just gonna go ahead and knot our final stitch and then I'm gonna pop in a pillow and that is it to this project. This row pillow looks so amazing with the rest of the pillows on my couch. The design is super fun and quirky and I think it also adds in a nice graphic element, especially since there's so much contrast with the black stitching against the white fabric. And for just a few bucks, I think this looks just as good as the original. All right guys, so those were all the projects from today's video. As always, I would love to know which one was your favorite. If you would like to see more DIY dupes from another store, definitely let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear some of your suggestions as well. And huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to check out the link in my description box to try them out and get 10% off of your first website or domain. And as always, if you guys recreate any of the projects from today's video, make sure that you tag me on Instagram. I post on there every single day and I will also share some of your projects on the screen here. I especially wanted to highlight this DIY because it is a wedding DIY and if you guys have been watching me since then, you guys are seriously so amazing. Wedding DIYs definitely helped my channel grow and I cannot believe we are getting so close to 100k thank you all so much for watching and thank you guys so much for supporting my channel every single week that is it for me today stay inspired and i'll see you in the next one bye